we're going to go right ahead and we're going to hit the life tag. So this is going to go ahead and we're executing the scrape and we can see that we have returned a list of 10 items. Each one has some JSON data with the text and the author. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily take your web scraper and then turn it into a fully functional API that we can deploy onto the web. So in this video, we're going to be using fast API. Uh, this is possibly the easiest way to get this done. And it's a really sort of popular upcoming framework and also UVCorn, which is going to be our ASCII server for us. So if you haven't done so already, you need to make sure you're using a virtual, a virtual environment. So get that set up and pip install both of these. If you come to the docs for fast API, it will show you what you need to do to pip install. But once you get to that point, you should be able to have your terminal open and you'll be able to have everything installed. The next thing that you want to do is to create two files. I've called mine main.py and scraper.py. And then you'll be at this point here where we're at right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking the quotes website here. I've got this loaded up. Let me just make this a bit bigger so we can see what we're going to do is we're going to take the data from this website here and we are going to scrape it and we're going to uh, you create an API. So when we give the category, you can see the tags here, tag, sorry, when we give it a tag, we'll be able to get back the JSON data for all of the quotes on that page. So I'm only going to be dealing with the first page here. We're not going to be doing pagination in this case to keep it as simple as possible. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to write our scraper. Now it's up to you how you do this. What you want to do is basically scrape the site and have a list, a, a list of dictionaries at the end that we can then pass through fast API to actually give on our API on the server. I'm going to use request HTML for this. That's my favorite web scraping program at the moment. I've got that pip installed. So what we want to do is we want to do from requests HTML import uh, HTML session and then we are going to create a class. Now we need to create a class because we're actually going to import this into our other uh, our other by file. So I'm just going to call this scraper and then we need to create a method which I'm just going to call scrape data. Keep it nice and simple. Now we need to put the word self in here because we're within this class. So this class method that we need. So we need self and we are also going to give it the tag. So I'm just thinking ahead here because I'm going to want to scrape the data based on the string of the tag that we give it. So now we need to go to the website and we need to have a quick look at the URL and how it works. Um, I'm going to copy that and paste it into my code. So I'm going to say the URL is equal to this. And we can see that it has the tag on the end here. Uh, there might have been a page or something on the end as well, but I've cut that off and tested that I know that this works. So I'm going to turn this into an F string. I'm going to get rid of the actual tag on the end and I'm going to replace it with the input that we give it into this function. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to create my session. So I'm going to do S is equal to HTML session. This allows us to use the accession object to scrape data. And then I'm going to do R is equal to S.get and the URL. Then I'm going to print the uh, r.status code just so we can check that things are working. And now I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to do a quick test to make sure that it is indeed working and I'm ex getting results back that I'm expecting. So I'm going to say, uh, let's just call this uh, scraper. Let's not call it that. Let's say uh, quotes is equal to because we're creating an instance of our class scraper and now we can access the scrape data function from our class object that we just created so quotes dot scrape data and if you remember here we need to give it a tag to pass in here so I'm just going to put life and then I'm going to run this and we should hopefully get no errors back and everything should be fine great and we got a 200 code there which means that is working so we can now proceed to actually get the data back that we want. So I'm going to say that we want to return a list of dictionary objects or JSON data of all of the quotes on that page. So I'm just going to quickly create a blank list. I just call this Q list. And then now we need to go back to the site. So I've got the inspect element tool open here. Um, this is what we use all the time to check the elements. Now I know that this page is all HTML, so I'm using it this way. If your page is not HTML or it's JavaScript, you'll need to do this a bit differently. 
Um, however, this is more about the sort of process of turning something into an API. So this part is kind of up to you and you just need to get to the end point that we get to, which you'll see in a minute. So we can see here that all of the quotes on this page are in this div class of quote. So that's going to be what I want. So I'm going to copy that word. Then I'm going to come back to my code. I'm going to say that the uh, quotes are equal to r.html.find because we want to search the HTML here. And it was a div. And for uh, in uh, request HTML, we use CSS selectors. So we got div.quote, which is what we want. And now we can actually loop through this. So we can say for Q in quotes. And we can, let's just print out um, q.find. And I think if we go back here, because we're now inside this, we can search for the span with class of text. So let's go back, span.text. And we want first is equal to true. So we want the first response that it finds on the page. And I want the dot text object, and I'm also going to hit dot strip on the end. I do this quite a lot uh, automatically anyway, just remove the white space if there is any. So now I'm going to run this again, and hopefully we are going to get a list of some data back, hopefully the text of the quotes of each one on the page. Um, and we'll be able to move forward there and actually start to create the response that we actually want. So there we go. We can see that uh, we've got all those different bits of different information there. So I'm just going to kill this terminal. Now I'm going to create a dictionary object that we're going to be able to store in our list. So I'm just going to call this item for lack of a better name. There's our dictionary. Now we can actually use this. So I'm going to indent this and I'm going to say, instead of printing it, I'm going to say that we're going to sort of call this one the text q.find and we don't need that one there. Put a comma and the next one we're going to do is author. So we can go ahead and I know it's going to be q.find again. And we are going to look for the text of the author name. So we can either do the inspect element and hover over it, or we can see it's right here in front of us. So this is a small tag. Uh, it's quite an uncommon, uncommon tag, I think, in HTML. However, it will work. And the class is author. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to say small dot author. And again, we want all of this extra stuff on the end. The first is equal to true and the text.strip. And then I'm going to come back here and just test that it works by printing the item. So now we should get our 200 stages of code and a load of dictionaries back with the text and then the author. There we go. So this is going to be the information that we're going to pass back through Fast API to our browser when we query it. Now to get it to that point, I want to turn all of this into a list. Uh, I want to add all of this to a list. So I'm just going, instead of printing the item, uh, actually we'll leave the print in there because we'll be able to see it in a terminal later. I'm going to do qlist.append dot .pend our item. And then out of this function, I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. We're going to return the Q list there. So now running this function, we will be returning a, the, the list of all the quotes of all the dictionary data that we just saw. So we can actually save that to a variable and do something with it. So now I think that the scraper file part is done. Uh, it was quite easy, nice and simple. Again, it doesn't matter how you get to this point as long as you are outputting some data, we can carry on with that. So now we're going to go to the main.py. Now this is where we're going to actually create the fast API app. Now this is really simple. We can just do from uh, fast API import fast API like that, noting the different capitals. And then we want to create our app. So I'm just going to say app is equal to fast API as an instance of there we go. And we're basically almost already there that basically just creates our app for us. But we need to add in a root. So what a root is basically where if you think about you've got your main URL when you execute that and you look for the data on that page, that's kind of your root. So if it was slash about your root would be heading to slash about or if it was just the main page, it would just be the slash. So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, at app .get because this is going to be a get request when we hit this endpoint. 
and we're going to keep it nice and simple and it's just going to be on the default uh, forward slash the default root page of the the app itself and we're going to say that we need to give it a category so we're going to do the curly brackets and cat like that and now what we're going to do is just define what happens when we hit that page so the actual default page what we're going to do is we're going to say async def because the beauty of fast api is it's all asynchronous out of the box nice and easy and we can say read item cat so that will basically let us pass that information through and then we can return some data but what we actually need to do now we do a comment uh, colon in there what we actually need to do now is import the bits of our scraper that we need into this main.py file so when we run it it scrapes the data now that's really really easy we can just do from scraper import scraper because we called this here so all we're doing is we're importing this class but we still need to create an instance of it so i'm going to copy this both of these lines i'm going to paste this one here so you can see that we're creating an instance of our scraper that back there and then what we're going to do is we're going to return this part so if you noticed in this file when we ran this we're actually going to get the list of data back that we scraped so here we want to do that but what we want to do is we want to get rid of the uh, actual text written in there i don't need that line there left it in there by mistake and we're going to put the word cat in there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to run this um, and to do that we need to come back to our terminal and this is where our uh, you can see i'm inside the virtual environment and this is where the folder with all the files in and we need to type this so this basically gets uvcorn to execute the uh, app and run it so we can access it from a browser uh, using the local uh, server so we're doing uvcorn main app reload and this if you look here is the same as what we've called our app in fast api so if we hit enter now it's going to hopefully load the server up for us and we can see some of the data coming through and it comes up and it says you're on this url so i'm just going to copy that and we're going to come back to our browser and if we paste that in we're going to get ah detail not found but it is working one of the good things about fast api is you can actually do forward slash docs and it will take you to the swagger ui and this is where you can easily see and test all the endpoints that your api has and you can see here we have a get request here where it reads the item in from here and you can actually mess around with it here and see the response now this is really handy for testing um, but what I'm going to do is we're going to ignore this and we're going to go right ahead and we're going to hit the life tag. So this is going to go ahead and we're executing the scrape and we can see that we have returned a list. And we're going to go right ahead and we're going to hit the life tag. So this is going to go ahead and we're executing the scrape and we can see that we have returned a list of 10 items. Each one has some JSON data with the text and the author. And we can see we get the next set of data there was only one let's find another one how about navigation that sounds interesting navigation and there's one on there now if you try to do something that doesn't exist like this it's going to return nothing so we now have a fully functioning api that we can query in our browser or we could send requests to uh, from python to get data back based on the category for the quotes that we are scraping as we're querying it so hopefully this has given you some kind of idea of what you can do and what you can achieve and maybe the very first look for you at creating an app with fast api so i've gone through this reasonably quickly i definitely recommend if you are interested in this that you go ahead and look through the documentation for fast api and sort of read a bit more about the roots and how it all works um, but you kind of get the idea of what you can achieve so thank you very much for watching guys that's been it for this video in the next one what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to deploy this app to heroku so you can see how that part works and then we might start moving on and making more and more interesting and maybe more relevant apps than something that you that like this which is just for demo purposes and doesn't really do anything of any use so thank you very much for watching guys hit that like button it really helps and subscribe if you're interested in this sort of thing i've got loads of web scraping content on my channel already there's more to come along with stuff like this uh, so yeah thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one goodbye